This is Twit. Well, you know, we haven't built anything here recently, so I thought tonight uh, we would look at uh, one of my fun recent projects I did back in December that involved an Arduino, uh, color LCD screen, and ham radio. This is the first HF rig that I ever owned. It's a Yaesu 857D, and I used it for several years, and it worked fine. Eventually, though, I upgraded to other rigs, and this one sat on the shelf for several years. I decided that uh, I would put it in the pickup truck that I own. It's kind of an extra vehicle. I don't drive that much, and I thought I might as well put an HF rig in there. I've got it, and I did. Unfortunately, after a couple of years, it developed a little problem. And I understand this is common to these rigs. You see the lines in the display there? Well, uh, that's not very good. It makes it difficult to read the frequencies and other information on there. And the S meter, is that S7 or is that S3 that we're looking at there? Well, it's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? My friend Wayne, KG5RE, has the same rig with the same problem. Uh, supposedly, it's the display that's used in there. It's mounted to a board with conductive epoxy. And after being in a hot vehicle for a period of time, that epoxy begins to break loose. And uh, different segments uh, go out in the display, as you can see there. And it's not a good situation. I don't think you can buy the display itself. You may can send the head in to Yezu and have it repaired. I have not researched that option. I'm not sure what that cost. But I had some parts sitting around here. And I recall seeing Tommy's segment on a heads-up display for this exact rig back in episode 64 in March of 2014. And I thought, you know... Um, I'll look around and see what parts I've got. Maybe I could just build a heads-up display and use that with this. Tommy had used a monochrome LCD display with his, and that would have worked, but I got to looking around, and I had this 3.5-inch TFT LCD screen for an Arduino. It claims to be a touchscreen. I bought this at uh, Dayton Hamvention. However, upon further investigation, it's not a touchscreen at all, uh, which is not a big deal to me. I was just thinking 20 bucks, that's not a bad price for, um, you know, a graphics display that does RGB color. And this is it right here. It's based on an ILI 9481 display. And I found that those are available from banggood.com. Uh, currently for only $10.73. On the rear of it, it doesn't say anything about being a touchscreen. There is a micro SD card slot on it, which I don't need right now, but could be handy for something in the future. And it takes a lot of I.O. pins to operate this. If you tried to use it with an Arduino Uno, you'd use up most all the I.O. pins that are available on there. So I'm going to be using it with uh, Arduino Mega instead. Now the Mega's got a little more memory on it and a lot more I.O. pins. And as a matter of fact, the example code I found on the display, the guy was using a Mega, so shouldn't have any problems there. You just mate the display onto the I.O. pins of the Mega. And I've still got plenty of I.O. pins left over on the sides here. I'm only going to use uh, pins 52 and 53 along with the ground to connect the TX and RX for serial communications. But there's plenty of I.O. ports left for other projects. Uh, you could put controls on there, push buttons, uh, anything you wanted. But I'm not going to do that at this point. We'll hook pin 52 of the Arduino to the TX connection on the cat slash linear connector and pin 53 of the Arduino to the RX pin on the connector and, of course, ground on the Arduino to ground on the connector. That pretty much covers the hardware portion of the project. Of course, I'll want to build some kind of box to mount this into. Now let's look at the software. 
And here, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to search on the internet, find the individual pieces that I need to the puzzle, and then assemble them in a way that will do what I need. The first piece here is a cat library to work with the FT-857D. Fortunately, James Buck, VE3BUX, wrote one several years ago. This is the same one that Tommy used on his heads-up display, and that will save us a lot of work. Now, you can do this project for any rig that supports cat command or serial commands, but you'll have to do a little work. You can find this library at ve3bux.com. The next piece we're going to need is some way to do the serial communications between the Arduino and the rig. Unfortunately, our display uses the pins that would normally be used for serial communications. However, we can use the software serial library that's included with the Arduino IDE to use other pins. Now, just keep in mind that some pins on the Arduino will not work with this library. The two that we're using, 52 and 53, are supported by it. You can find more information at arduino.cc. We'll need software to translate commands to our display. Unfortunately, the LCD display library that comes with the Arduino IDE will not work with this display. I did a little searching and I found the driver we need on GitHub at the address shown on the screen. It allows us to do most of the basic graphic commands on the ILI9481 display. However, there's no text characters defined in the library. For that, we'll use the Adafruit GFX library that comes with a lot of included fonts. Plus, you can add your own fonts to it. Now, that's four different pieces of software I've downloaded. I'll need the right code to tie all these together. But there's one more function I want to add that I don't think I've ever seen on a rig before. You know, I've got a little extra room on this display because it's fairly good size. So I thought, why don't I put a count-up timer on it? so that any time you key the transmitter, it will start counting and let you know how long you've been transmitting. And that could be handy to help you avoid timing out a repeater or any number of things. Now, a simple timer like that could easily be written on the Arduino, but I found one someone had already written, which meant it's been tested, and it works well, so that will save us a lot more time. You can find the count up countdown timer at arduino.cc on the link I'm showing here on the screen. Now, most of this code is not super complicated. However, there's a good deal of it, more than we can cover here in this video. So I'm just going to give you a link here to the file where you can download the code and look at it yourself or actually use it in a project of your own. Well, let's see if this was worth all the effort. I could be looking at this on the display. And I might be able to guess what frequency I'm on. Or I could be looking at this. Now the exposure's been turned down on the camera, so it's not quite as bright as it is in real life. It looks much better to the naked eye than it does through a camera. At the top there, I've got my call sign, my name. And then I'm displaying the mode, lower sideband, and RX for receive. And then I've got a big, nice display there to show me the frequency, and of course I'm in megahertz. And down at the bottom I've got the S units displayed as a numerical value and a bar graph that shows it as a graphic. When we begin transmitting, the indicator changes to TX and the bar graph then displays power output. And it's a red bar there. The banding that you're seeing on it is not on the display, it's just an anomaly of the camera photographing it. And it's not actually calibrated to power output. It's just a rough approximation. In this case, we were transmitting with lower sideband. So you can see that modulation is affecting the power output. If we change modes to AM, then you'll notice it's a solid carrier there when we transmit. This is an inexpensive display, and it has a serial connection to the radio. If by chance the screen should become garbled, you can force it to redraw by just switching the radio to the packet mode. That way you don't have to power cycle the display in order to refresh the screen. 
Now, here's a feature that I don't know that I've seen on a radio before. It's our count-up timer that keeps track of how long you've been keyed. You know, when you get excited or enthusiastic about a subject, it's easy to talk longer than you realize. This should help you prevent timing out repeaters. This display is not as nice as I've seen on radios that, you know, come with built-in color displays. However, it does help make this old radio a little more comfortable to operate, especially now that I can read the frequency again. As I mentioned earlier, you could build this project for any radio that has cat or serial commands on it. You could also expand it a lot with push buttons and such to give you a lot of different functions. It just depends on how much time you want to put into it. This project was a lot of fun to build, and I got a lot of enjoyment out of tinkering a little bit with the Arduino and putting that display to work. And the bonus is, I can actually use this radio again. And that was my project from back in December. It was a lot of fun, and it really made a big difference with that radio for me. I actually kind of enjoyed uh, operating again with all the lines in the display there.